So I come from Russia, but it's not the Russia you imagine when you hear Moscow and St. Petersburg. It's the south of Russia, which is closer to places like Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan and Turkey and Iran than to Moscow, for example. And the city where I live and teach, it's Astrakhan. Uh, it's a very vibrant city. For example, we have more than 150 nationalities living in this city. There is a need for interpreters in many languages, the classical, so to say, ones like English and other European languages, and also the languages may, uh, that may seem exotic to you. For example, Farsi, Azeri, Armenian, Dari, which is the language of Afghanistan, and so on and so forth. So we have now the brand new uh, conference interpreting class, it's Televik, and uh, it's uh, very similar to what, for example, they have in Geneva University, in the European Parliament, it's the same kind of equipment. And uh, uh, we, of course, use a lot of online resources like speech repository or seed and so on. And we have our own, not very large, but still database of speeches in Oriental languages. So we combine the Western and Eastern approaches and uh, we do a lot of virtual classes with partner universities. I would say that it's cultural difference uh, which presents most of a challenge because me I do not have Farsi for example as an active language but still I have um, to communicate with people from Iran quite a lot and every time I come, come say to uh, the Iranian consulate which is in Astrakhan I always want to shake hands with people there, with men. I always forget that a woman shouldn't shake hands with Iranian men. So it's something that you have to remember. And uh, that's why in our example, in our case, the courses of intercultural communication are very important. So we give our students so many different examples of how to deal with, for example, clients from Turkey or from Iran. Or, or if you deal with clients from Azerbaijan, uh, you should count for very emotional speeches, but people would for sure come later than they promised. But our students, we always uh, uh, try to make them as stress resistant as possible, because you never know what kind of clients are to come. Russian speakers, they never think about interpreters. You can, for example, come to the speaker and say, please, there will be simultaneous interpreting, try not to speak very quickly. He would do it like this, say, don't worry, everything will be okay, of course I would remember, why not? And then he comes to the room to speak and says, well, it's a pleasure for me to speak here and yesterday I had a speech prepared. But when listening to the colleagues today in the morning, I decided to speak about completely different things. And he uh, starts to speak very quickly, very emotionally. You don't have anything prepared and you have to deal with it. So that's the Russian peculiarity, I would say.